Welcome to the Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024, live from Paris, France. Join hosts Savannah Peterson, Dustin Kirkland, and Rob Strache as they interview some of the brightest minds in cloud native computing. Coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con is brought to you by Red Hat, CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. The Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024 begins right now. Good morning, Cloud Native community, and welcome back to Paris, France. We're here at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con. My name's Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous analysts, Rob Strecce and Dustin Kirkland. Gentlemen, day two, how you feeling? Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Fresh. Yeah. Fresh as a daisy. Ready to go. Let's yeah. do this. <laughs> Fresh as Paris blooming yeah, in the springtime. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think it's been a very, energizing morning, the, the keynotes were they have just wrapped up and what we saw was some great news around sustainability and funny enough, something I kind of uh, hit on a little bit harder than I expected to yesterday afternoon, but uh, Kubevert and oh, yeah. running VMs on Kubernetes. Uh, we had Goldman Sachs on stage talking about that. With Red Hat, we had numerous uh, sponsors, including Deutsche Bank, mm. talking about sustainability. In fact, I think sustainability was the big topic and how to develop sustainably. Uh, I, I think one of the things, and Dustin and I were briefly talking earlier, that it, it's one of the things that seems to be really in flux is how do you deal with AI and sustainability? And yeah, I, th I think absolutely. that's one of the big ones. And I know you had some thoughts on that. Yeah, the sustainability thread was common across all the keynotes. I'm sure that was an orchestrated uh, theme here. Uh, what's interesting there though is, man, it's hard to talk about sustainability and the power consumption driven by I was just going to say, GPUs. GPU yeah. and sustainability and, and, yeah. is not. And I think rightly so, blockchain and, and crypto yep. has gotten a fair amount of flack about how much absolutely of the world's energy is spent mining coins, okay? Now, if you're not mining coins with GPUs, you're probably running an AI ML workload of some kind, and you know, I, I think we got to think a little bit about whether, you know, if that is worth, yeah. you know, if, if the product that is being produced by those, you know, ML workloads, you know, can be sustainably performed, I, I don't know. There, well, and it's also about optimizing it. If, yeah. if it's sitting there idle and you're just sucking power, it's not. Right. Exactly. Well, it sucks way more power exactly. when it's running, less when idle, but some when yeah. idle for sure. So utilization, that's a piece of it. Um, and then running as efficiently as possible. We heard a little bit from the ARM folks on yep. the stage today about, you know, that, that takes care of part of the problem, I think. But the, the CPU is not drawing the power, the GPUs are Ex drawing the 100%. power. 100%. And, and I think also, too. and I, I think part of, yeah, I think that's, some of them had gone into the fact that storage was a big component of it, but it was also about, hey, how are you, how are you planning for high availability? And I, I think that it was really interesting how they were going through a number of these different high availability strategies and what they were still not seeing between how you use auto scaling and how you use actually these different CPU planning tools to go out and do that. But then there was the back-end storage, which moving to non-spinning disk definitely helps, but there's still a ton of, of spinning disk yeah. out there. So I, I think that's, that's an interesting piece in a way that they were going about it and the string that they kept pulling on, so. I think, it, so obviously a conversation around sustainability, and I love that you brought up the blockchain piece was a part of that movement, and it's true. It, 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 those are really our, our power suck moments. How, so yeah, we're talking about it. How are companies actually going to do this? How, is it possible, or is this a bit of a, a myth? I, I mean, it's a great talking point for a keynote. Uh, I think you're right, though. Well, right, I mean, <laughs> love the lip service yep. and love the planet. What are we going to do about this? Right. Yeah. Uh, but there, there, are a number, there are a number of projects. Uh, the LF Energy Group is looking at this. So there are a number of projects going down. I think there's, it, it's still really hard. And in fact, I, I thought the Deutsche Bank, uh, who's a sponsor, who was up on stage showing some of their dashboards, I thought they, they hit on a very interesting point. And when I left Amazon some number of years ago, they 
literally came out with, at reInvent, a carbon footprint tool. And my whole thing was that I thought it was a little bit of greenwashing. Well, Deutsche Bank, now we're, we're two plus years or three years out from that, me leaving there. Deutsche Bank basically laid into all the cloud providers saying their carbon footprint tools are not sufficient. And that they've gone out and built their own and started to do that, but then they showed the architecture for it. And it's a lot of gear, it's a lot of yep. containers. And so I, I think there's a lot of different vendors that are kind of aiming at that and to trying to provide that as a, really how to get sustainable there's got to be more there's, done. In there's the a community. lot of different approaches, right? There's the the one piece that we have some. Con I say we, the you know people who are part of the cloud native computing foundation community have some control over is writing code as efficiently as possible. You can write your code inefficiently. That consumes way more yeah. CPU, GPU, disk storage, and whatnot. We can we need to do that as best as possible. Uh, what the silicon vendors do or choose to do or can do, that's going to be largely driven by their customers. What customers decide to pay for, decide to pay a premium for, what customers refuse to buy. And then on the, the back end, you know, the cloud operators, energy credits, you know, sustainable energy initiatives. I spent some time at Google with a number of data centers uh, that are carbon neutral, and the way to get that is consuming energy from uh, renewable sources, but also buying you know CO2 offset credits where possible. I, it, it's going to yeah. take you know multiple it's, layers. It's messy. Yeah, we actually had a conversation at at supercomputing in Denver uh, about a company in Denmark that's using the they're actually heating Copenhagen mm. with the power right. li like liquid From, cooling yeah, quite literally, sure. and then and then taking that liquid and then heating it, and it's a nice way of regenerating that and using that yeah, that yeah. power consumption for good and creating a commodity for the community. And they actually had one of uh, the local providers who is here in France and uh, has data centers here in Poland and somewhere else, I can't remember, but, uh, and they were talking actually, the, another thing that doesn't get talked about is water and the, the water consumption and things of that 100%. nature. And I, I think I just, we, yeah. we yeah. to your point about GPUs, uh, the Iowa data center for Microsoft where ChatGPT runs, for every five queries or every five prompts, is 16 ounces of water. Wow. So if you start- Glasses of water, which is insane. Yes. So yeah. you start to look it's at insane. it, there's a lot of measuring, management, better, like you said, there's uh, another, uh, Tigra, who's another service provider up in the Nordics, they're actually building into mines, yep. uh, abandoned mines, that's where they're building their data centers to get ambient cooling. So I, I think it's going it's got to be an all the above strategy. I tend to believe and talk to people that the credit stuff what the hell is a credit? Where does it go? How does it really get applied? It doesn't take carbon out of the air. It's a nice, a nice thought, but I think when you start to look at it, and I think organizations, especially here in the EU, are starting to hold people. It transfers more the responsibility. Credit. The, yes. the credits programs transfer the responsibility. It, it helps others invest in sustainable yeah. initiatives. There are ways of taking CO2 out of the atmosphere, but it's very expensive to do yes, so. It is. And, and so that's not something that you know, uh, can be done uh, on, on the cheap or free. Yep. No, not at all. I mean, I, and I, I'm glad that maybe that'll be a theme of our day today. We've got some really interesting guests on. We've got Scott from Docker, we've got Microsoft, we've got more guests from Red Hat. Yep. It's going to be power packed. Absolutely, and I, I think they talked about uh, Wasm was another one, yep. and talked about yeah, SpinQ, and we'll have that, you know, uh, talking about how they're packing more in using actually spin cube on Kubernetes and packing in more smaller applications and being to your point about more efficient compute and more efficient development, they were looking at that and that was a little bit of a message as well. So, yeah, a lot of fun. Well, so have you, you know, today we're doing our swag segment tonight. <laughs> have you seen any cool swag out there? I haven't. This is I a pretty swaggy event. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's socks galore, if you want I mean, it. Chronosphere made me a pocket square. <laughs> it's going to be really hard to beat that. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I know I feel bad I don't have a jacket on today to show it off. But uh, anyway, what do, you, what do you think is the most surprising thing about the show? Oh, man. Hot take, huh? Yeah, yeah. hot take. Oh. What is your hot take? It's time for that. <laughs> Starting day two, super fresh. No, I, I, I think again, I just go back to what I pounded on yesterday, which was security, being moving SecurityCon out of out of the main 
KubeCon and making it its own thing has kind of forced people to get, and we were talking about one of the people saw a huge line for security, one of the few security tracks that was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the fact that security kind of got separated out may be a miss, uh, and maybe it should just be a co-located co thing. Um, I don't know if how that works out, but uh, I think that to me is, that's my hot take for so far for this week, is that yeah. security is missing. Yeah, I'd like to see a, a lot more security focus for sure. Um, I, you know, if we if we look at the discussion around AI ML, I think it's surprising to me that it's still that it's still so front and center. I mean, we spent all day yesterday talking about it. It's almost like you know apps going on the line uh, in the late '90s. Like at some point, being on the internet is it's no longer like a badge of pride. You, you just if you, you just you were on the internet at some point, right? right. Uh, we stopped talking about it and, and bragging about it and designing around it. I guess we're still in the early days of of that, but at, at some point, I think there's AI ML everywhere and it's less of a story than, than well, it is right now. Well, in fairness though, I think when we were, you know, ChatGPT came out after the call for papers for KubeCon Amsterdam, yep. this is actually the first cloud native event in Europe since. In Europe, yeah, yeah that's true. That that's since we saw this whole uh, surge. That's a good point. So I would say in fairness. B both continents get to have this, their exactly. AI Exactly, I, I was going to say, come on, come on, come on. Okay. We got to sure give the community <laughs> a second. I understand you're on the front lines, Dustin. Okay, okay, but I do, okay. think, I do think it's fair. On that note, actually, speaking about this, there are 233,000 and contributors to the Cloud Native wow. Foundation's projects. There are 183 graduated incubating and uh, sandbox projects. And like we said, this is the largest KubeCon ever. So maybe that's why everyone's excited to talk about AI. I've got another hot take for you. Just thought of one. Oh. The number of VCs and startups here, uh, outstanding, actually. Really, yeah. really impressive to see the VC community in Europe and uh, supporting, uh, you know, hopefully some founders with uh, some new ideas. I will say that the ecosystem is different here than it is in the United yep. States. Yep. And, it, and it is a much more collaborative and inclusive, and, and yep. maybe I'm obviously jaded because we're in Paris and it's lovely, but, but genuinely, it always is a different energy when we're here. Well, I'm excited for our day. We're going to have some great guests. Can't wait to do it with both of you. Dustin, Rob, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to our fabulous team over there for holding down the fort. And thank all of you for tuning in from home, from work, or from wherever you are. Here for our live coverage at KubeCon, CNCF's largest event here, Cloud Native Con in Paris, France. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.